Well, it's about that time. Good morning. Welcome to the Clinch River Homestead. I'm Nicole. And I'm John. And today we're due for our 50 hour service on the big boy behind us, the Big Branson 5520. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So today we're going to run down the 50 hour service in the Branson book. Unfortunately, I got a 20 series book and well, it is a 20 series, but this all only talks about the 5220 and we have a 5520. So we're hoping everything's going to be the same and we're hoping we got the right oil filter because there was a little mix up at the dealer. So let's get to it. And first things first, what we got to do um, is it's pretty dirty. So we got the air hose hooked up. We're going to pop the hood. We're going to hose everything off uh, under the hood with air uh, before we clean it. And then we're going to clean it with the pressure washer. We're not going to show you any of that. Um, well, maybe a clip. Maybe. That's my favorite part. <laughs> but uh, we really want to focus on the 50 hour service here today. So let's get started with under the hood and get into the air filter and get into the radiator filter. We're going to check, see if there's any bird nests in there as well. So. Come on with us. We moved this from our parking pad over there up here. So that tells you one thing, the engine's warm. And I'm not gonna hose off anything yet. So that's why this is such a great time for us to clean everything under the hood while it's cooling down because you don't wanna spray that engine with pressure water, cold water, cause it'll just crack stuff, so. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do underneath the hood is we're gonna pull the uh, air cleaner off because as I said in a previous video, to get to the radiator, uh, I guess it's a radiator screen filter. Well, to get to that, we gotta remove all of this stuff right here. So let's get to removing. Remove those two rubber straps and that kind of holds this whole plenum assembly on here. Uh, the next thing that I wanna do is probably loosen up this hose clamp here so we can remove this entire piece uh, to get that out of the way so let me go grab a uh, flathead and I'll be right back so I got a flathead here and that's probably not the best tool to use for these uh, hose clamps I think they're a 5 16 so if you got a 5 16 nut driver laying around use that instead and if I'm wrong on that correct me <laughs> gonna pop that loose the other thing I'm gonna do with that hose clamp is just tighten it up a little bit just so it doesn't slide off when we're doing stuff here's another really good tip uh, this tube goes to your intake right to your turbocharger which is right here okay what we just took off was the air filter the filter that cleans all that air going through this tube. So we're not going to use any compressed air on this until that air cleaner is connected back up or you're going to plug this hole with an old rag or something to prevent any uh, debris getting down in that turbocharger. As if you do that and destroy a turbocharger and it gets in the engine, well, it'll do more damage than just a turbo. So keep that in mind. Don't use any compressed air on it until uh, you get that back on all right this is the overflow for the radiator so we can just get that out of the way and now these little flaps will this flap will kind of flip up and <coughs> so you should probably put a rag in this before you pull out this screen because if it's full of grass it's going to go all over the place Again, I think it's a horrible design to put that there. So I'm going to do that now. Should have done that earlier. And all you got to do is just put a rag in that hole. So now that I got the rag in the hole, but now that allows me to get the air compressor and kind of blow this underside out of the engine here um, because there's a lot of dust. And again, we're going to be hosing this off. So 
I want to make sure that it doesn't cake up with mud. So we're going to go ahead and blow this out now. All right, while I'm waiting on the compressor to uh, build up a little bit more air pressure inside of it, Nicole went to go grab some paper towels because the other thing we got to do is grease all the fittings that are on this bad boy. So I'm going to show you, but greasing over time kind of makes a coagulated mess. So she's going to clean off all the grease fittings so that when we go to wash it here, it's not spewing grease all over the place from the pressure washer. So we got everything cleaned out uh, under the tractor hood now. Uh, Nicole's still going around and cleaning off all the grease fittings. So the next thing I need to do is we're going to take the air cleaner apart and we're going to blow this out and get any dust that's in that out. So let's get on with that. So the air cleaner itself is pretty simple. It's just got these three locking tabs on the back here. Undo those. Ooh. And that was our air filter. Pretty dusty. Ugh. And it has multiple parts to it, so you want to make sure you clean everything out. Ooh. So another good thing that you want to make sure you do, on the bottom of this, there's a little nipple. And this is to relieve any water that might get into the system. You want to make sure it's always pointing down and you want to make sure it's never clogged up. Otherwise that could lead into some problems. know I've already done this once already during this uh, 50 hour period so you may need to do that more than once every 50 hours depending on how dusty your environment is keep that in mind okay so putting this thing back together uh, what I generally like to do is take your little blue filter here first and you just push it down in a little bit and then when you put this filter on this filter is going to bottom out on top of that one and you're going to push both of them down at the same time okay so both filters are in now let's put the uh, clamshell on now keep in mind when you put this on you want to make sure that this little relief nipple is on the bottom so you're going to kind of hold it up like it would on the tractor and you can always adjust this once you get it on but this back clip is going to be very difficult to get to so I always like to just line it up by eye first all right and it even tells you on this outer clamshell piece top because you need this on the bottom you may not see that because it might be covered in dust Okay, now that we got the air cleaner put back together, um, we're going to get ready and put this back on the tractor. But before we do, we just have to make sure that we put on our overflow line, uh, which is right here. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and put this uh, air cleaner filter assembly back on. And, uh, but we need to remove the rag that's in our tube back there and uh, so we can hook it up. Pull the rag out. Okay, now it may be hard to tell, but the tractor's on an angle right now. So what's in the reservoir here, it looks like it's okay. It looks like it's half between low and full, but it's really not because on the back side of it, it's way down on the empty. So we're just gonna add some more uh, 
water to it. And with the antifreeze that they put in the Bransons is the green antifreeze, at least that's what it is in mine. So, so now that we got that topped off, because this would be pretty hard to get to if uh, your air cleaner box is over top of it. So now that we got that on. Go ahead and pop on our air cleaner here. This is why I like nut drivers for this. Don't slip and cut yourself. Okay. Next thing we need to do is put our straps on here and that's gonna hold our breather box in place. Now I found that it, this is a pretty finicky thing, meaning that this little nipple right here will hit on this top. If this is not installed, if this isn't installed right, it's going to hit on this hood when you bring it down. I had a lot of problems with that before and until uh, I figured out what was my problem. So if you take your air cleaner off and you find you're having a problem shutting your hood, don't force it take your air cleaner back off again and it's probably this little nipple down here that's uh causing the problem so now this is on um and we're going to test the hood now and see if it closes properly with that on yep okay so now uh that we've got that done we're going to wash everything off right now with the pressure washer and get it cleaned up and then we're going to take it down and finish with the uh, 50 hour service. So hope you enjoy. So after we got this back down here, I'm going through a couple checks in the book and one of the thing is checking for free play in the clutch and the brake pedal. The brake pedal free play seems good. The clutch pedal free play seems not good. Seems like we got a little bit too much free play in the clutch pedal. In the book, it's specified between one, no, 0.1 and 1.4 inches of free travel before the clutch actually, you feel, start to engage. So I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna show you how much free play this actually has. Okay, so we're gonna measure the free play on this. And I'm looking at this right here we're right about at the two inch mark. Okay, so I would say that's three quarter inches of play. So that's actually fine. All right, so according to the book, that's enough play and that's fine. So we're at three quarters of an inch of play in the clutch. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this plate back on. And for anybody who wants to know, that's the adjustment right there. So it's right behind a little plate, behind the clutch pedal. And that's your adjustment. Okay, so we're going to go down our checklist here. We clean the air filter, clean the radiator uh, housing, uh, fuel pipe connection. We got to check that and check the steering wheel hose. Uh, over on this side of the book, we have the electrical cables we got to check. We're going to re grease everything, uh, tighten any nuts and bolts. Um, let's see, coolant fan belt, that was okay. Engine breathe pipe, we clean that out. Uh, generator motor, well, we clean that out. That was full of dust. And check the hydraulic system. So now I'm going to get underneath of the tractor and we're going to go over any of the uh, clamps on anything and we're just going to check over and make sure everything looks tight. Uh, a couple clamps. I see right back there are some hose clamps and that is your hydraulic filter. So if you have a hydrostatic model, you'll have two of those filters. I just want to make sure those clamps are tight. Alright, so we're under the tractor now, and I'm going to show you a couple things that I never knew of that are under here. There's a couple grease fittings that you've got to get to that are underneath of this tractor. And I'm going to show you right now. And I'm also going to show you something that I didn't see before because I never climbed underneath of the tractor. And you want to really check and make sure all your nuts and bolts are tight and that they're there. I'll show you what I mean. Look at that. 
You know what that holds? That holds up this big thing. This is the fuel tank. There's no bolt, no nut on the end of that holding that fuel tank support. So now I gotta get one and put one on. Check all your nuts and bolts. So you see that? That's why you gotta check everything. You can't trust that anybody's gonna do their job correctly anymore. If you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. Okay, so now we're gonna check the grease fittings. So underneath of the tractor, you've got a grease fitting here. There's a grease fitting here. And a grease fitting here. So those are all I see. That's about midway down the body of the tractor. And I know there's some up front. But uh, so I'm going to get the grease gun now. And I'm going to get these greased up. And then we're going to move up front and get the oil drained out of it. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the oil change. Uh, I'm just checking that there's no water in the fuel or anything. Making sure my fuel lines are look good and tight. And they are. So, you know, because I got a pan like this, and it doesn't kind of have a reservoir in the bottom, I'm going to take the oil filter off first so I don't accidentally drop it and splash it in the oil. So I'm going to get that off first, and then once that's drained, and put a new uh, filter back on. We'll take the plug out of the bottom, drain the rest of the oil, and then get some fresh oil back in it. All right, so taking this oil filter off, if it's your first oil change, which probably the majority of uh, people watching this video will be your first oil change because it's a 50 hour service, make sure you get a good player of channel locks or get a uh, oil filter wrench because from the factory these things are all put on here by a gorilla so when you put your new one back on don't wrench it on there you go snug and then maybe another eighth of a turn or something because you'll never get the darn thing off so let's get it off Oh, and another tip, make sure you got the right oil filter uh, before you take this off because you'll be kind of in a pickle if you don't and it's wrong we because sure you won't be able to reuse this oil filter once you use these on it. Do we make sure we have the right one? It looks right. And now we're just going to let this drain out a little bit. While this is draining, we're going to prepare the new oil filter to go on. So let's get that ready now. All right, so we got our genuine Branson Kook J oil filter here, and we need to prepare this oil filter to get ready to put on the tractor. You just can't go ahead and screw this on. Well, I guess you can, but you'll be running the engine dry for a little bit until it gets oil in it. So first thing that we have on here is a protective cover. Take that off and that's your filter right there. Now one of the things that you want to make sure that when you take this old filter off, you see this rubber O-ring on here, make sure this rubber O-ring comes off with your old filter because you don't want to double gasket it, you will have a problem. So all we do to prepare that filter to get ready is we're gonna take some of our oil here. Now I'm using 1540 Rotella uh, T6 synthetic oil. Now remember, this oil filter is on its side when you put it on. So you're not going to fill this thing up completely with oil. Because as soon as you turn it on its side, it's going to run out, right? So, so now that we poured some oil in it, and I, I guess I put about halfway of oil in it. Because I think that's going to be enough anymore, and it's probably going to want to spill out. So I'm going to set this down on the ground now and I need to clean off where the old oil filter came off. All right, so right in this area here, I'm gonna wipe all this off to make sure we have a good clean surface to put our new oil filter on. Just gonna clean the tractor off real quick and get all the oil off of that because when I move the pan, 
I want to make sure I don't have any oil drippies on the uh, concrete here. Now I'm going to take the take the new oil filter and uh, pop it on and try not to spill any of it. Putting that oil filter on, you're going to be real tempted to crank that thing down as hard as you can, as tight as you can. I would say tighten it up to it's snug and then maybe go like a half a turn or so. But you don't want to keep wrenching on it because it'll be really hard to get it back off again. So now that we've got that drained, I'm going to get underneath and uh, drain the rest of the oil in the tractor. All right, so now I'm going to get under the tractor and show you where the oil drain plug is so we can get that removed. You really want to do this with the proper wrench. Okay. So if we look up, can we see it? Here it is. So this is the oil drain plug right here. The oil plug is put on very tight as well. <coughs> Now the trick is to not drop the plug in the pan. <laughs> <laughs> there should be about uh, two gallons of oil in this. I think it's 1.7 gallons. So make sure that your pan is big enough to hold that when you go to drain it. Now we're just going to let that drain. The other thing that helps it drain is to pull out the engine oil dipstick to allow uh, air to get in so it can drain better. So I'd like to get two things done at once. While that oil is draining, I'm going to go ahead and start greasing the uh, fittings up the front. And you want to be really careful about greasing these tie rod ends because um, you really don't want to blow out the seals. So be careful uh, when you put grease in. When you start seeing, then uh, stop. <laughs> and that's it. Remember, otherwise you'll blow out these rubber seals on the front and once they break then uh, your tie rods won't last very long. Now they say to do this every 50 hours on the uh, front tie rod ends, so let's go do the other side. Okay. Now there's a couple grease fittings underneath of the tractor. Uh, in the front end here, I'm going to get under here and show you those right now. Okay, so we're under the tractor. The first grease fitting is right here. Uh, this is in front of the front axle. The second grease fitting is right here. And this is behind the front axle. So we're going to get both of these grease fittings now. that much so the whole front ends greased oil's been drained filters been changed I'm gonna get underneath it and put the oil drain plug back in so we can get some oil back in it don't want to forget to do that so let's do that now and the other thing I like to do is to clean off your oil drain plug very well because sometimes there will be metal particles on it and sometimes they actually make these magnetized so that it will attract any metal particles in your oil whether this is or not probably not but I still like to do it anyway keep it clean now when you go put this back on same thing as like the filter you don't really want to wrench this thing on as tight as they had it from the factory. Granted, there might have been some paint holding it in place, but... Okay, and that's about it. Okay, everything else looks good. So, let's get out of here now. Alright, so now we're on the back side of the tractor. And I'm just hunting for any grease fittings that I can find. 
I found one in quite a precarious place. Let's show you. Okay, so this grease fitting is literally right here. I hope you can see it. So I'm going to try to get the grease gun in there and get this fitting right here. So I hope everybody got that on that last grease fitting in the back. I couldn't find anything in a manual on that fitting. So make sure you grease it and all the other linkages that are underneath that I showed you, those three midway down the uh, tractor body. So uh, let's get some oil in it now. The other thing I want to do is when I pull off the oil filter cap, you're probably going to have dust under that too. You want to clean off anything around that cap because you don't want any of that getting inside your oil. All right. Make sure you wash out your funnel. This is brand new, so you don't have to worry about that. And I like to pull out the engine oil dipstick while I'm adding the oil. I'll put it in, but I won't push it in all the way. This way oil doesn't splash up on it and then give me false readings. But I do test it two or three times. Now this calls for uh, 1.7 gallons of oil. So this is one gallon, so it's going to take this whole thing. Take it slow. Don't go too fast because you don't want oil, one, overflowing out of the funnel or overflowing out of the oil fill port on the tractor. So now once I've got one of them in, I just like to go ahead and check my oil level on the dipstick just to verify that what they're telling me is true of the 1.7 gallons because they didn't even put bolts on underneath of it, so it's showing full on the dipstick. But that's probably because the one, the engine doesn't have oil in it, and two, the uh, oil filter is not filled up yet. So before I add any more oil, I'm just going to crank it up, let it idle for about 10 seconds, shut it off, check the oil again, and keep filling. But before you start it up, make sure you take the funnel out and put your cap back on. Hmm. That amount of time should be enough that uh, the engine should get oil purged through the system and into the oil filter. So now let's take an oil reading on the dipstick and see where we are. And for people who don't know where the dipstick is, the dipstick is right there. It's this little yellow handle, and you pull up, and you read your oil. Make sure you wipe it off. There, I don't know if you can tell, but we're about a half a quart low. So, okay, so we're about a half a quart low there, so I'm just going to... Uh, go ahead and top us off and I'm going to add a little bit at a time and keep checking it just to make sure that the dipstick is correct <laughs> Because sometimes it might say it's a half a quart low and the dipstick is not reading it that way. So Let's get this back on now depending on what climate you're in Will depend on the oil that you're going to use so in the manual it says 10W40, but if you're in a very, very hot climate, Texas, California, states like that, or even here right now, we're mid-90s, uh, not today, that's why we're doing this. But um, if you're in a really hot climate, you might want to step it up to a 1540. Once you get into wintertime, you're probably going to want to go back down to that 1040, especially if you're getting down uh, in the teens. So... Again, little out of time until we reach our uh, until we reach our full level. Now, there's another misconception uh, when it comes to oil, and people think, well, you can't ever have enough in your system, but that's untrue when it comes to an engine. You don't want to overfill your oil, 
and you definitely don't want to run your oil dry. Um, there's a fine line there because what happens if you overfill the oil and you pull that dipstick out and it's way above the fill line, you might want to uh, just take your oil filter out and empty it out and put it back on again or something just to let some of the oil out because uh, what will happen is the, the system is designed so that once it's at the proper oil level, that crankshaft will not hit the oil that's in the oil pan. So if you were to overfill your oil, what's going to happen is that crankshaft is going to come down and it's going to hit that oil and it's going to be like an egg beater and you're going to be churning up that oil and then you induce air bubbles in the system and once you get it frothing and it starts producing air bubbles, then the oil pump cannot pump air bubbles, it pumps oil. So once that happens, then you'll start to get uh, oil deprivation in your engine and you could actually have an oil starvation problem by having too much oil. So you want to make sure your oil level is correct. So now we've given that enough time for the oil to get down in the crankcase and settle. So now let's check the uh, oil dipstick. See here we are. I like to check this a couple times just to make sure. Look at that, we're right on. dead one okay what we'll do now that uh, we've topped it off is pull the funnel out put our cap on start it back up for another five or ten seconds just to verify and uh, check our oil and if we're good then that part is complete same thing with the oil filler cap you don't really need to wrench that on either just hand tight and another eighth of a turn because it's got an o-ring you don't want to tighten it up too much start it up we're just a touch below full so it probably would have been okay but are you gonna fill it up a little teeny bit more well, being the OCD person that I am, I'm probably just going to add a little bit more oil. <laughs> but it really, being that much off, it's not going to matter that much because <laughs> it's very, I'm, I'm talking, it's not even like, probably not even a quarter cup of oil. Yep, we are right on the money now. Told you it wasn't much. All right, so the only thing that we're not going to do in this 50-hour service is the transmission hydraulic oil. I was told by Branson that 50 hours is much too early to uh, change our hydraulic oil, so we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you where to check it, and that's on the back of your tractor. There's a little peephole, so come on back. Let me show you where to check it. So right here, this is the uh, little sight glass, and you can see the little bubble at the top. Our fluid is still very clear and uh, we're not going to change that right now. So at our 100 hour mark we're going to go ahead and uh, do the hydraulic service. I've already got the filters and everything so we're ready uh, as soon as that time comes around. But I didn't want to do it premature so I hope everybody liked the video today. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, I hope you got some good information on this uh, Branson and the grease fittings. Make sure you grease up all your fittings. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, if you like the video and you love to see more content like this, consider smashing that thumbs up button, click subscribe, and tick the little bell to get notified on all of our future videos. And again, thanks for watching the Clinch River Homestead. I'm John. Nicole's got the camera. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.